can request for a link. We will be sharing these details. All, the ones who have registered will also get an email after the session. The chat is available. Feel free to put your queries, your questions on the chat. And if something is very urgent, don't hesitate uh, to interrupt me and ask any query which you may have. Otherwise, the request is to uh, mute uh, your mic when not speaking so that others don't get disturbed. Can I just ask you something? How do you request a link? We will, uh, we will uh, mention this at the end of the program. We, we have the, uh, the email ID of the person to whom you have to uh, request. We will share this with you at the end of the session, okay? okay? Okay. So this is a new facility now which has been started where the participants, those who are interested in the uh, recording, can request for a link. Shit, sorry, sorry. Sorry for this. I'm just... Yeah, so what's uh, the agenda for the day? Uh, we will talk about the uh, need or the importance of compiling a personal or a household budget. Personal budget, household budget is one and the same thing. We'll come to it. How does one compile or create a personal budget? More importantly, how do we track the actual expenses and the, uh, and the incomes, of course, vis-a-vis -vis the budget? And uh, is there any course correction required? And if so, how do we go about it? Okay, so we have others who have joined in. Uh, welcome all, Leo, Giri, and, hi, hi. Uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth is there, uh, Nidhi is there, Pooja is there, Rita Todi is there. And we have somebody uh, else also. Okay, so uh, Anoop is also there. So welcome all. We get uh, moving on the session. Uh, start the uh, screen share. Okay, so what's the agenda for the day? So we'll see what actually is a personal or a household budget. Something very obvious, but let's at least uh, revisit this and understand for ourselves. Uh, what is the importance or what is the need of uh, compiling this uh, household budget? How to go about this exercise? Then how do we track the actual cash flows? And remember, when you're talking about the cash flows for the household, you're talking about both the inflows as well as the outflows. Uh, while compiling this budget or while tracking the expenses, what do we uh, need to do and what do we need to also avoid? So what are the pitfalls we need to avoid so that we have a meaningful budget and uh, also that our finances are in order? Uh, do we need to have any course correction? If yes, how do we go about it? And uh, lastly, we'll also speak about uh, specific financial goals, which all of us have. Okay, so uh, without uh, taking too much time, what is a personal budget? So basically, as the name suggests, uh, personal or a household budget, one and the same thing, it's a statement which is compiled and uh, which uh, basically uh, indicates the cash flows of the household. So what are the monies which are coming in? What are the monies which are going out? Uh, you know, it can be done, uh, done for a particular period, but typically the period is a month. Uh, so it's nothing but a forecast of the monies to be received, from the various uh, deposits and the various uh, investments uh, uh, which we have. 
uh, as well as the payments to be made uh, by the household during the period under consideration. Very important point to note here is that we need to take into account only the actual cash receipts and the actual cash payments. So, you know, for example, income which is accrued are not to be considered. So what is an accrued income? Uh, uh, for example, if, you're, if one has invested in an NSC, which is a, a five-year uh, scheme, and one gets, uh, one does not get any regular income, but the interest accrues from period to period. And at the end of the period, at the end of the five-year period, the investor gets the principal amount as well as the accumulated interest. Now, in this case, what happens is the interest does not come to the investor at the end of year one or year two or year three, year four. The entire lump sum, which is a principal plus the cumulative interest comes to the account or comes back to the investor at the end of the, uh, at the end of maturity. So, which means that there is no regular cash coming into the household. So these are not to be taken. So when we talk about a cash flow uh, budget or a personal budget, uh, we are talking about actual monies coming in the bank. Uh, and the actual payments being made uh, by the household, okay? So again, if you have any queries related to the immediate uh, presentation which I have done, feel free to uh, put it in the chat box or you can ask me, else we will move ahead and we will have uh, time at the end of the session to ask questions and also to take your feedback. So moving ahead, the next... What is the importance of the personal budget? What is the need to do this? So basically, uh, you know, the main aim of this uh, exercise is to ensure uh, that we have a smooth financial journey. Okay. It's basically uh, nothing but a statement which will indicate whether uh, the household is cash deficit or cash surplus uh, during a particular period of time. Of course, it helps in better cash planning. Uh, it also helps in controlling our expenses. It also indicates whether uh, certain, uh, you know, spends like uh, certain discretionary uh, expenses. You know, we have this uh, uh, expenses which can be broadly classified as essential expenses, something which we can't avoid. We have to uh, uh, spend on those uh, type of expenses. And there are certain other expenses which are discretionary in nature, which can be avoided or it can be postponed or it can be reduced. Basically, it's a difference between needs and wants. So, uh, it also, the one of the purposes of this uh, statement is to also, uh, you know, uh, tell us whether we are in a position to spend all uh, the expenses related to our wants, or we then need to uh, defer it or postpone it for a later period once we have the funds with us. At the same time, uh, this exercise also uh, helps us uh, in uh, achieving our financial goals. We'll come to it. It also helps in, uh, you know, it, it shows us the surplus monies from time to time, if at all, if there is a surplus and uh, which is then an indicator or a sign that uh, one can invest those funds uh, to earn uh, more returns in the future. So if you have uh, a surplus, which means your receipts for the period have exceeded the expenses, uh, you're left with a cash surplus. Now, what do you do with it? You may be tempted to spend the entire amount on something which may probably not be required. Or then you may feel, okay, I'll save it, I'll invest it, so that my corpus grows, as well as I get higher returns in the future, which will take care of my uh, retirement phase. I think we should also all uh, keep in mind that we're talking about a fairly long uh, post-retirement phase, unlike in the past. You know, there are people who retire probably at 60 or 62 or even earlier, and they realistically could have 25 to 30 years ahead of them. So what do you need to do? You need to uh, protect your corpus. You need to, uh, you know, see how well you can grow it. 
you need a regular regular flow of income so obviously one would be more circumspect in uh, you know uh, saving uh, in sorry spending uh, those sums you need to take care of the requirements not only of yourself uh, but also your spouse your family uh, at times it could be uh, your children as well so all the more important that uh, the corpus is protected and one of the main tools or the key tools to achieve this objective is to have a budget which also helps us to achieve our uh, goals and also helps us to save and invest as the situation uh, demands so now let's get going as to the uh, compilation of this budget how do we go about this i don't know how many of you all uh, uh, you know do this exercise i'm sure that most of you all would be doing some sort of an uh, uh, you know estimate of uh, what are the expenses coming up and when i'm talking about expenses coming up it's not only uh, in the next month or the next few months uh, it would be for the year it could also be in terms of uh, some special goals you have uh, for example uh, uh, you plan to spend uh, on say a second home for example or you would like to uh, save money to uh, you know uh, to ensure that uh, you give a decent uh, uh, education a higher education to your children or it could also be somebody who's uh, uh, wanting to have a second home so there could be various reasons for uh, you know uh, and, and there could be various goals where where one needs to uh, you know plan properly and ensure that when the time comes to uh, uh, you know to spend the money on the goals which you have planned for uh, you do have it and then you're not left scrambling for cash uh in which case you will not be able to achieve the goal or it will get uh, you know there be further delay on that so uh one is the starting point of a personal budget and here i'm talking about a regular budget i'm not taking into account a uh, specific special goals which i talked about which of course could be 5 years 10 years 15 years down the line and uh, normally the amounts involved in achieving these goals would be significantly high so let's talk about a regular uh, budget a regular household budget uh, how does one get started so if somebody is already doing this exercise and most of you all i believe would be doing this in the sense uh, finding out what are your spends what is your income for a period and thereby what is the extra cash do you you have at the end of the month or the end of the quarter in some way or the other all of us do this exercise we we may not be doing it on uh, in a very formal way or in a spreadsheet like ideally it should be done but there is uh, there are people and there are families who at least have some idea as to where they're going to spend their money on on what they're going to spend their money and from where they're going to get the funds so for some of us who are still working or who are part time or consultancies we know that there are uh, we would be getting uh, money from time to time though the uh, amount may not be uh, uniform uh, unlike a salaried person who gets a uniform uh, standard salary so uh, all the more reason for us to be more particular in uh, you know spending time some time on doing this exercise and also monitoring it so first of course to get started is you have already spent so we are now in the month of march i have already spent in january and feb i know what is the uh, what are the expenses what do i spend on uh, and uh, according to that i will then estimate or i'll budget for the subsequent months now it's not as simple as i said so what do we need to do if you are talking about uh, spends uh, we need to then estimate the payments and the expenses under each of the major heads we will come to the major heads and you'll also see a, a a file as to how this can be actually done a sample file so you need to break up your uh, expenses under the major heads and then note down the amount which you have spent and the amount which you are going to spend and that leads us to the next point which is uh the distinction between 
what I mentioned earlier, essential spends and discretionary spends. So obviously, as all of us know, there are certain expenses, certain payments, uh, which are absolutely essential. Groceries, for example. If you're staying in a rented house, the rent which you have to pay, for example, and so on and so forth. So these are expenses, these are your needs. You can't do without it. You means you and your family. So one has to ensure that we have funds, we have monies for spending on the essentials. At the same time, there are other categories of expenses which are related to our wants. So you want to have it, or your son wants to have it, or your daughter or your spouse wants to have it. Fine, okay. So do you need? Do you have the funds for it? So this is discretionary. Okay, I don't have it this month. I'll do it next month or I'll do it in the following month. So it's very important that when we are making this uh, uh, statement, when you're compiling this statement, uh, it's very important that we uh, split uh, between the needs and the wants, understand what are our needs, something which we can't do without, and then understand also what are our wants and whether we would like to spend uh, upfront or we would like to wait for a future month. Also, there are certain types of expenses which are fixed in nature. So, for example, if you're talking about, say, uh, uh, society fees, for example, normally they will not vary from month to month. So, they'll remain fixed. 5,000 rupees, I have to pay to the society, I have to pay 5,000 rupees in the normal course for the entire year. On the other hand, there will be some expenses. For example, it could be gifts. So, you have your... Uh, child's birthday coming up and you want to spend on a party or you want to give them a gift. Obviously, these birthdays are not going to come every month. So these sort of expenses are variable. Variable is nothing but which varies from month to month. So we need to distinguish. To do a proper exercise, a proper budgeting exercise, very important that we do it sincerely, we do it honestly, and we understand uh, the nature of those expenses. And just like in finance and accounting, we say that when you're budgeting for expenses, or when you're accounting for expenses, one needs to be conservative. It's always good to have a small buffer so that uh, you, know, you don't have any issues at the end in meeting those expenses. And similarly, when we're talking about income, but it's not very relevant here because income to estimate or budget for income is simpler. When we do for incomes, also we are conservative, conservative we take what is what we are absolutely sure of. So be conservative in budgeting for the expenses. You also need to you know, go through your bank statement, for example. You can have, uh, you know, go through your old records if required. Uh, there are also, let me tell you, apps available in the market today, which help you to uh, do this budgeting and controlling it. Now, how useful they are, I will not be able to uh, comment. Uh, if one is comfortable, and I guess most of us, like we are attending uh, these meetings on Zoom, we would also be comfortable in the basil, uh, basic Excel uh, spreadsheets. I think that's good enough. Uh, you can uh, you know, make a spreadsheet in the way you want it, analyze it in the way you want it. So according to me, having these, uh, you know, uh, the budget uh, compiled on an Excel sheet, which is very user-friendly, would be the most preferred option. Uh, Yes, one can do it manually on a notebook, like our parents or grandparents used to do it. And even, let me tell you, they also had uh, this in their mind about, you know, from where the money will come from, how much money does the household have. According to that, we will spend so that we don't uh, uh, go into deficit. So this exercise of budgeting, of course, it may become more scientific. It's become more scientific now. And we have uh, technology available with us. But uh, let's not forget that even our parents and grandparents also did some sort of a budgeting to ensure that the household finances are under control, to ensure that we don't overspend. So while a budget uh, exercise or a, a manual budget exercise uh, can be done, uh, and of course it's better than not doing any uh, such budgeting, uh, the most uh, preferred option uh, or the, more, the easiest option would be having an Excel uh, spreadsheet. And as I said, there's no standard format. You can do it. I'll show you. I'll give you an example at the end of this slide as to how, to, how can we do it on an Excel uh, spreadsheet. And of course, one doesn't have to be very accurate. You don't have to write 97 rupees or 230 rupees. You can round it off to rupees 1,000. You need to have a you know an estimate or an idea about where you're going to land at the end of the month. Do you have 
uh, uh, regular flow of income coming in to meet your expenses. It's as simple as that. Uh, you do it monthly, you then uh, do it cumulative for the year and ultimately then you uh, do it uh, year after year. So what do we do? We have, uh, uh, we've taken uh, care of, we have explained about the expenses. Uh, we also need, so when you're talking about budget, it's not only the expenses. So it's always two sides to it. So we're talking about uh, expenses. We're also talking about the income because uh, you obviously have income. Now the income can be in the form of some, uh, uh, you know, income from part-time assignments or you could be doing some consultancies. Uh, but your bulk of the income at this stage for those who are, say, fully retired or largely retired would come in the form of incomes, interest incomes uh, based on your existing investment. So you've got your corpus, you've invested in various schemes and various products, mutual funds, uh, probably even equity shares, so you get dividends. So uh, we have a reasonable idea, a good idea, about what are the incomes or what are the interests which is falling due in month A, in February, in March, so on and so forth. So you have the expenses which are budgeted, you have the receipts, and then you it's as simple as that. You take the difference between the two and you'll know whether it's a, uh, a deficit or a surplus for the month. Okay. We are not here talking about a specific uh, uh, you know, expenses which we'll uh, cover separately or even unforeseen sudden expenses which may come up. Good. So I'll uh, go back, I'll open the Excel sheet and this will give you a flavor of uh, the uh, budget, uh, the personal budget. Uh, and how does one go about it? Uh, what are the controls we need to uh, exercise and how we can uh, you know, uh, compile it to uh, achieve our objectives. Uh, share the screen again. Okay. So this is a dummy file. And uh, if you can see here, you have Horizontally, the months. So you have January, February. YTD Feb is year to date Feb. March, YTD March, April, it goes on and it's uh, there till the end of the year. So it will be there like this. It's a very, it's a very simple format. As I said, it can be done uh, as for your own uh, format, whatever suits you. Obviously, you will take into account the expenses uh, which relate to you, which pertain to you. So now, one can have multiple bank accounts, but for the sake of uh, simplicity, I've just taken uh, this person who's got uh, one bank account. So you have one uh, bank account and you have one post office account, which is here. So very simple. What do you do? You have the month-wise breakup. You start off. Consultancy fee is 50,000 rupees. This person gets a monthly annuity from LIC, is getting another 15,000 rupees. So these are fixed. This is monthly. Consultancy fees could vary. It could be fixed, it could vary, but typically it will vary. So Jan, he gets uh, 50,000, Feb is 25,000, March is 45,000, and so on and so forth. So I've just done for the first three months. A monthly annuity normally is fixed, 15,000. Uh, example, 15, 15, 15, 15 45,000. Then uh, this person has invested in uh, one of the best schemes for the senior citizens. Uh, Pradhan Mantri Vaya Vandana Yojana is getting 10,000 rupees per month. It comes on the uh, every month. So it's, he's opted for the monthly interest, 10,000 rupees per month. This is a summary and a breakup of all the receipts for the month. Then he's invested some money in a bank FD. Uh, bank FD, he earns quarterly interest. So he will get interest in Feb. After that, he will get it in May. After that, in August. And after that, in November. 80,000 for the month, 20,000 for the quarter. Senior citizen saving scheme quarterly interest, it's paid on the 1st of Jan, it's paid on the 1st of April. Just again, uh, another example, uh, dummy figures here to create this budget statement. As we all know, uh, quarterly interest on the bank savings account, so 31st March, 2,500, end of each quarter, average of, you know, you get 2,500, 1,800, so on and so forth. Then uh, this person also is invested in a company fixed deposit. Uh, it could be Bajaj Finance or HDFC or whatever, NBFC. So uh, normally they pay interest uh, 
uh, if, if one is opting for half year interest, then the interest is paid on 31st March and 30th September, 40,000 rupees here in March, and I think it should be 40,000 in September as well. So this is how it's to be shown. Now, let me add here that some of these uh, incomes attract TDS. So we have to be very clear about it. Uh, for example, uh, senior citizen uh, saving scheme, uh, it attracts TDS. Currently, the TDS is 7.5%. Uh, the normal rate is 10%. So how do we account for TDA? So there are two ways, very simple. Either you show the net over here under receipts. So you show the net receipt or you can show the gross figure here. Say over here is 24,000 and probably you'll have some 3,000 rupees of, or sorry, 2,800 rupees of TDS that can be shown under the payment side. But Please do not forget to incorporate TDS because we are looking for cash actually coming in. So 24,000 is not what you're getting. You're getting 24,000 less TDS. So you need to take into account the net figure. And that applies to other heads. For example, uh, PMVVY, there is no TDS, so the whole figure will come. On annuity, there is no TDS, so the whole figure will come. Uh, but on the others like uh, you know, convertible bonds, uh, sorry, non-convertible bonds, annual interest, again, there'll be a TDS, so you have to take into account the net fee. Okay, so here you have, so this way you have the breakup of uh, the uh, of the receipts. Uh, there is also company dividend, so this person is holding shares, but as we know, normally the year ending of uh, companies is March end, and they declare a dividend somewhere in uh, end June, beginning July. So, uh, and uh, typically the dividends are given then in the months of July and August. So 30,000 in July and 30,000 in August is what the dividends are coming. And then you may have other heads uh, as applicable because th this is something which would vary from person to person. There's no such thing as a standard budget. You'll have to modify it. You'll have to customize it according to your needs and according to your requirements. And more importantly, you should do it in a very simple way, something which you can understand and also important that something with at least your spouse also is involved and she can understand. So what do we do? We come at the total of your bank accounts. Nowadays, of course, we know that most of the uh, transactions are in uh, are through digital means. So it could be online, it could be check payment. There's very little in cash. So for the purposes of this particular exercise, we have not taken any cash uh, dealings. Okay, so then this person also has an account with the post office. So uh, he is invested in a monthly uh, income scheme and he's getting 4,000 rupees per month, 12,000 rupees for the quarter, post office, uh, except for senior citizen schemes, there is no TDS. So the entire amount is, uh, is coming in as cash. And then he's also invested in a time deposit. He gets annual interest of 7,500 every March. This is the total we arrive at, the total receipts, 1,21,000 for Jan, 89,000 for Feb, and 1,36,000 for March. Total for the three months is, 3,46,000, okay? Let's move to the other side, and that's the key. Now, why I was saying it's easy? Because we have the investments. Uh, we assume, when I've, I've made this list, we assume that there is a detailed statement of the corpus available with the investor. Uh, and that details all the investments, including when they are falling due, what is the maturity amount, if interest is payable, what is the frequency of payment of interest, what is the amount of interest? So if that statement is ready, it will be easy to compile this particular report, uh, this particular uh, budget uh, statement. Let's look at the payments. And we said we need to be very clear, we need to be conservative, and need to, need to also understand what expenses would be fixed in nature, what are variable, and what can be uh, uh, you know, delayed or discretionary, and what cannot be delayed. So groceries, again, it could be it could vary. So your groceries for this, uh, 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 for this household, 29,000 for the quarter. Household helps can have, that's taken here. Normally it'll be fixed, so you'll budget. It's easy to budget for fixed expenses, a bit tricky to budget for variable expenses. Rent, if some of y'all are staying in rented houses, you're paying rent, uh, rent has to be uh, taken here. Utility bills, electricity, et cetera, for example. Society maintenance fees, it's fixed. Car fuel, having cars. You may have uh, you know, petrol expenses. You could even have a driver that will add to the expenses. You have local conveyance. You're taking Uber or you're taking a cab, Kali Pili, to go to your place of work or whatever for entertainment or to watch a movie or to eat out at a restaurant, local uh, uh, conveyance. Routine medical expenses, very critical. Uh, normally, 
uh, for our age and for the uh, profile, we would have some sort of expenses which are uh, routine in nature as far as medical expenses are concerned. We are not talking about uh, sudden unexpected medical emergencies. We'll come to that separately. These also need to be budgeted. Just an example again. All these are representative figures. They don't mean anything. It's just to show you how the exercise is to be done. How is the budget uh, in the Excel format to be compiled? Then uh, we have this credit card. So credit card, uh, it can be a blessing. It can be a curse also, but I'm not getting into that argument. So uh, credit card spend. So you have multiple expenses made on a credit cards. You need to uh, also... Uh, estimate and put it down in this uh, sheet and uh, it needs to be detailed uh, and then uh, shown under the respective heads. And then you have personal care expenses. You want to go to the parlor or you want to do some other uh, uh, other expenses. You go for your uh, grooming, etc., etc. Obviously, you need to budget for that as well. Uh, especially for your wife who may get upset if there is no budget for these uh, sort of expenses. Uh, you want to buy something for your kid or for your uh, uh, grandchild, whatever it is, some electronics, etc. So your club fees, entertainment, uh, restaurant expenses. The family has got this habit of going out, spending at restaurants. Of course, now there's more of dine-in because of COVID, less of restaurant expenses. So basically, you're covering all your expenses to the best extent possible. Of course, there could be variations. So you arrive at the total payments of 81200 yeah, you have, and these are all linked. So you have the formula in place. Your total surplus for the month of Jan is nearly 40,000, 39,800. If you go to the next month, you'll find the reverse. Your payments are in excess of the income. So there is a shortfall of 6,700 for the month. But fortunately, what's happening, because you're having the surplus of the previous month, uh, on a year-to-date basis, which is uh, YTD Feb, you still end with a surplus of 33,100. And then so on and so forth. So March, you have another surplus of 49,800, 82,900. And this way it goes on and on. And these are all you know, data which is linked uh, to other uh, uh, you know, worksheets in the same file. So this is basically how, and in very simple terms, how a, uh, uh, how a, a cash flow budget or a household budget uh, needs to be made. So I'll just take a break here. Uh, it's been a pretty quiet uh, audience. So any questions or any queries, any doubts at this stage? Or every, yeah, I hope you're saying something. Maybe another line to say unforeseen expenses. Two. So actually, I was, you're absolutely right. So I was coming to that, I hope there's a, but it's very valid. Yeah, you can have that. You can have it. See, as I said, it is, it should be customized for each person. Yes, you can have, and ideally you should have. But I had a separate, uh, uh, you know, sub slide to show uh, how do we deal with these sort of expenses. But very valid point. Anything else? Sumati is joined in. Ravinder is there. Uh, one or two have vanished also, but it's good. We've got a good uh, uh, crowd. Yeah, JG, uh, this is the first time. This is Sumati. Sumati, very uh, welcome. A pleasant surprise. And, uh, Thank hope, you. Thank uh, you. Is not, I'm sorry is not, I couldn't uh, join you in other... The other uh, no, no, no issues. I, I hope this is not the last time. Yeah, I will be there for many yeah. more. <laughs> okay. So any... Uh, I'm away. I was away. Yeah. Um, I just missed on the first uh, uh, bit of it. But then okay. I'll catch up. I, I, I fairly got an idea about looking when you were uh, explaining all the slides and other things. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm listening to you. Uh, okay, keenly. thanks. Ajay Ajay. Uh, thanks, Thank thanks, you. Sumati. Great to have you. Ranbir Singh, Thank not you. to confuse with the actor Ranbir Singh. It's Ranbir Singh, uh, who's also joined us. Namaste, Ranbir ji. Ravinder Kaur is there. Uh, yeah, Giri is there. Nidhi Puri. And Liu, of course, Hello. my uh, school yes, friend. Sir. Ravinder Kaur ji, namaste. And yeah, we actually... Yeah. Just something. Yes. I, I don't know. This will sound very... Uh, Maybe childish or very stupid on my part, but I oh, Ravindar, I, let me tell you, let me tell you, there are no stupid questions. Absolutely no. nothing. Please, please ask the question. Uh, no, and not really. You, a question. You, yeah, please. Or don't hesitate. I have never ever made a budget for myself. Somehow, all my life, 
and i been i don't know how to start it and matlab uh, really mota uh, mota pata hota hai but i have not made a budget i am slightly wary of this concept and of course as age is going on and as i'm become 60 plus now okay. i feel worried we should have done it's not that it's things are comfortable but they say talking i've never made a planned budget so i must have uh, fallen short of many things i feel so maybe it's uh, too late or i hope it's not too late or uh, will it really help me i am not too sure <laughs> but maybe from the expenses point of view and from medical and other unforeseen things you feel you should have a separate uh, money in balance that i feel that i've been Rav- that's so ravinder ji it's uh, as they say better late than never <laughs> and uh, it's it's never too late for anything uh, you know most of us probably would be under the feeling and uh, it's maybe not a wrong feeling that uh, we are very comfortably placed financially so it's fine it's going on nothing has happened in the past we have managed it all these years so we'll continue to manage i hope it remains like this for all of us but at the same time Uh, there is no harm in actually uh, working out and again i'm saying it's not a question of making uh, you know spending hours and hours together on this you can do it you can uh, you, you know at varying levels of accuracy but at least jaisa bolte hain hindi mein mota 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 moti bolte hain usko kahan se paisa aane wala hai aur kahan se kahan paisa jaane wala hai that needs to be uh, considered actually maybe a right maybe being a government servant so i'm a doctor in a government hospital oh fixed okay in, okay fixed storage in gpf and okay. no other mutual funds and all these things don't really i don't i'm not very sure okay. also uh, even the storage is fixed like fds or something so maybe that okay. is the reason you know ki uh, nothing really going from here to there so ravinder ji from which state are you in from you are coming from which state delhi delhi Oh, from Delhi, okay. No, I think there will be many uh, families and many uh, households uh, sailing in the same boat as you. So uh, this is not to scare, uh, you know, people and uh, starting this exercise. It's just to be more aware and uh, ensure that we are not, uh, you know, uh, we don't fall uh, short as far as finances are concerned during any phase of our life. I think this is all what we uh, strive for. Uh, you know as i said earlier i don't know whether you were there in the earlier part of this presentation the uh, uh, you know the expected uh, the, the life expectancy of an indian has uh, gone up significantly and it's only going to go up significantly so earlier when people used to talk about a post retirement phase it was possibly just 10 years or 12 years or max 15 years now you have very healthy people and i hope and pray that all of us here uh, remain healthy uh, living for you know up to the late 80s or early 90s now what does it mean it means that you have a longer period uh, to look after yourself so you need the money for it and it's not only the money for self it's also the money for the family and you know the family again varies from person to person so one needs to uh, uh, you know take this into account and also we need to take into account the fact that uh, there could be certain unforeseen uh, contingencies which come up which we can't uh, forecast so it's just to know that we are comfortably placed as and when something arises we have the funds or we have the money to uh, uh, you know to handle that that's all okay so i think i'll, I'll uh, get moving so we have seen this sample of a uh, of a personal budget let's go ahead let's move ahead okay so obviously uh, you know you've done this fine but that's not the end of it actually i would say it's just the starting so obviously we need to track and see where we are actually placed so we have to monitor the expenses from time to time now it's not that you have to sit down every day and say aaj kitna kharcha hua kal kitna hone wala hai you do it at least uh, i don't know that could be once in a month it could be once a fortnight depending on where one stands uh uh and where one feels uh, comfortable but uh, the uh, most important part here is that uh, this needs to be monitored and tracked and especially the uh, discretionary spends okay 
also if the focus is on expenses but uh, let's also remember that you have your uh, investments in various schemes for example some of them are maturing uh, in the month of march you need to ensure that you have uh, you know taken action on that maturity for example there is a post office time deposit 5 lakh rupees maturing on 15th of march you need to decide well in first of all you need to know that there is a maturity happening there are families i know or there are some not families but a couple of friends a one relative and a friend who had some big ticket item uh, some 10 lakhs or 12 lakhs i don't remember and he had in in a post office i think it was an nsc and this was about 3 or 4 years back and he just forgot about it and you know those time they used to give those uh, certificates uh, and he had a big bunch of certificates now of course it's all there in a passbook and he just uh, it was there somewhere in his cupboard but he he had not uh, kept any inventory of his investments and he had also lost track he, he couldn't find it it was i think his wife after uh, i don't know how many months found that off and then immediately alerted the husband who then went to the post office and uh, you know got it renewed now what has happened he's lost 8 months or 9 months after maturity you don't get interest for that period fortunately he was told that he will get only the savings uh, period interest for that period for for the 9 months so it's not that the bank and this applies even to a bank fd for example or a company fd of course there are some companies who will uh, you know uh, credit your account uh, immediately on maturity if the instructions have been given that way but then there are others also who will just lie low banks for example you don't go to them the money will lie they will not get interest uh, there's a period of 7 days within which you have to uh, renew otherwise you don't get interest so it's very important to uh, you know ensure that you have uh, got the money is on time and that you have taken action you have you renewed it or have you uh, uh, you you found out some other uh, alternative uh, scheme uh, you redeem it and then you invest in that scheme so it's absolutely important to track and monitor not only the expenses but also the uh, receipts receipts means it's typically uh, your uh, uh, investments which are falling due similarly you may be a landlord or you may have rented your uh, i mean you have uh, flats which are rented out have you received uh, the rents from each of the uh, tenants for example just give an example so it's very important that uh, you know these receipts and the incomes are tracked and you ensure that you have actually got it on time of course then you have uh, just like you've done the budget you've done the actual the month is over you have the listing of all your uh, receipts you have a listing of all the payments now uh, it's possible that you have a surplus which is good news and in, in the example which we showed you there were surpluses in two months and there was a deficit in one month but cumulative there was a surplus now uh, what actually happens you know if you have consistent deficits that means uh, you know your payments are higher than your uh, incomes Uh, you may have to go through what we call a post correction so you have to post correction is nothing but remedial action you have to take some remedial action because obviously you don't want a situation where your corpus is depleted you have to live for 25 30 30 plus years you need to ensure that you have the funds available even after x number of years and please also keep in mind that we are talking about a world where there is inflation the inflation the consumer uh, a uh, price index currently it's in the range of 6 and a half to 7% so inflation also is eroding your corpus so it's very important you may feel comfortable now but do you have the funds or will you have the funds 10 years 15 years down the line taking into account inflation the purpose of this exercise is to ensure that we are in a relatively comfortable situation because all of us let's admit all of us would like to live a life Uh, would not like to lower our standards. So we have we've gone through the working year. Some of us are still working, and our target, our aim is not only for us but also for our families to at least bare minimums to maintain the uh, standard of living uh, in the future. And a little bit of planning, little bit of budgeting, monitoring would do the trick. Because then you know what. what you need to do what is a course correction you have to take and that's the uh, next slide but before the course correction i've got something else to show you so we did we do this exercise we have done the budget we have done the actual what is the what should we avoid uh, how how can a budget exercise go wrong and there are many ways it can go wrong let me tell you so what are the pitfalls we need to avoid so first of course let's understand budget is not a magic wand i mean a budget bana diya 
I'm in control of everything. I can spend the way I want. Obviously not. So first of all, uh, ensure that you do not set unrealistic targets. You may be a you know spender. You may want to take your families out every week to a restaurant or to a multiplex, uh, or et cetera, et cetera. Now obviously you will have to uh, control if uh, control these spends. If you if you're not getting uh, if you do not do not have the incomes. So when you're making this. Uh, uh, statement uh, be realistic about it number one number two is uh, you don't have any spending discipline okay and here let me tell you that credit cards as i said earlier can be a blessing and also be a pain you have people who say okay mere paas credit card hai, i will spend but then do you have the funds to pay to the bank on your due date if not then you're making a big blunder because the interest rates on credit cards are pretty high they can go up as high as 42% per annum so always avoid uh, borrowing on your credit cards always ensure that you pay all your credit cards due on time okay the third could be uh, you know tracking it correctly you know your record keeping is not right so as i said earlier you don't have to be 100% accurate but at least you know mota moti kahan paisa ja raha hai aur kahan se aa raha hai you cannot afford to be inaccurate because it will lead to wrong results and then you could be in for a soup later on the next is you have not identified all the goals so when we are talking about the special goal what are we talking about so for example you could have some uh, you know uh, expenses lined up for the year you have not painted your house for example for four years you want to paint it this year uh, so you need to uh, you know you have not identified it and then suddenly you find that you you don't have money for it so what do you do you will panic similarly there could be other uh, big goals i talked we talked about higher education for your children it could be a foreign holiday it could be whatever luxury car second home it could even be the marriage uh, expenses for your children so you need these need to be uh, identified and then you have to start planning for it uh, accordingly more important the next point is important you know you have done your budget in silos you have not involved your family they are upset so obviously if you don't involve them they will not be uh, uh, you know they'll be very reluctant to uh, come on board and that's where most of the budgets fail so obviously this is something for the family the name is personal but we're talking about a household budget it's for the whole household so everybody has to be involved there has to be a sense of involvement you have to take their opinion you may take the final decision but it has to be a joint exercise because if they are not involved if something is thrust on them they will be the last ones to follow they'll say what the hell and the last is you're being too strict this is the opposite of uh, no spending discipline so you have one extreme where the person keeps on spending whether money is there or not and you'll say okay i will pay for my credit card and then you will pay the minimum balance and the, you know you you are then entering into a sort of a debt trap which you should avoid on the other hand you have some people who are being too strict so you keep on saving you make money you there's a surplus you keep on saving you will say no we don't have money for going out or for eating at restaurants Uh, so once in a while that also needs to be done otherwise you know the the family and the household will get fed up and and then the uh, budgets don't work so you need to do a uh, you know budget which is workable which is practical okay okay the next one uh, we have what i mentioned earlier course care so what happens you land in a situation where you don't clearly don't have the money you don't have the funds now it could vary from person to person and it could be uh, low high we're not getting into that but in case you come across this situation what are the options available to you you have to do some course correction so what do you do obviously the first is to postpone or delay or even eliminate certain uh, spends so you are planning a foreign holiday uh, for the family uh, you say okay i'm not doing it this year i will do it next year that's one way to you may want to again depending on the individual depending on various factors you may want to take up some consultancies or some part time assignments to generate additional income uh you may need to depending again on the sum required uh, and uh, depending on your goals you may need to monetize certain existing assets so it could be in the form of certain shares which you have you are holding on because of emotional reasons uh, you may uh, say okay i'll now sell these shares i need the funds Uh, that's an example 
you may also need to review your existing uh, asset allocation plan. So you have invested certain uh, percentage in equity, debt, gold. You may need to relook at it. You may need to rebalance it, or you may need to even restructure it uh, if required. The next one is quite, uh, I think, practical. So you know, a lot of us have invested, as I said, in various schemes. So there are some which are generating regular income. For example, you have senior citizen scheme, you have PMBBY, uh, and there are certain ones like NSC or maybe KVP where you get a cumulative interest. So you don't get regular income, but you get it at the end of the maturity period. So you may have to, if you're finding that your cash inflows have dried up, you're getting a good amount of accrued interest, PPF. Wow, I'm getting three lakhs per year. Interest, that's very good. But what's happening, that interest is getting credited to your account. It's not coming into your bank. What we're talking about here is money in the bank because you need to spend. So what do you do? You may remove, you may want to remove some uh, uh, you know, uh, amounts, some investments from uh, you know, cumulative schemes and move it on to uh, a scheme which offer a regular cash flow, which is nothing but uh, giving you uh, regular interest. That interest could be quarterly interest or it could be monthly interest or it could even be half yearly interest. You may need to do it. Lastly, and these are again examples, it's not an exhaustive list, but mostly these are the uh, options available where uh, one regularly runs out of funds. So if it's a one-off case, it's fine. But if you find out of, for the, you know, out of 12 months, nine months, 10 months, you're negative, only two months are positive. At the end of the year, also you're negative. Then you need to do something about it because you cannot allow this situation or this scenario to continue for long. Uh, if you're invested in mutual funds, for example, in growth schemes, obviously investing in dividend uh, schemes is a strict no-no. Uh, so what you do, you can switch to the uh, from the growth uh, plan to the SWP, which is systematic withdrawal plan, uh, depending on the need. So you get money at periodical intervals uh, and which are also more tax efficient as compared to dividends. Lastly, and I put that in red in bold, avoid borrowings at all costs. Do not get into a debt trap. That could be disastrous for the household, for the family. Okay, I come to the last slide. Uh, we talked about uh, the special financial goals and Anup earlier had mentioned about this emergency fund. So very valid, absolutely right. There could be certain unforeseen expenses, medical or otherwise. So it's always good to keep an emergency fund, which, will, uh, which you can dip into by uh, when the need arises, if at all it arises. So your regular budgeting exercise is not disturbed. Okay. What do you do in case of uh, specific financial goals where, as we talked about, we have got the examples, foreign holiday is a luxury car, second home, marriage of style, et cetera, et cetera. These need to be budgeted separately and of course planned well in advance. So obviously we as parents know, okay, I will get my daughter married or my son will marry after seven years, 10 years, five years or whatever. So you start thinking about it, you start planning about it. And you also have a specific plan uh, investment plan, you invest in uh, certain schemes. It could be a mix of debt and equity, uh, uh, depending on the time horizon. If it's a longer period, it would be more in equity. Equity, again, it's not shares, it's mutual funds. So which will give you the, uh, you know, the desired uh, amount uh, as and when the, uh, uh, the occasion comes up. So if you're planning, yes, I'll get, uh, I'll, I'll need to spend uh, X lakhs on, my, uh, on the marriage of my child after five years so you'll put money in a, a specific scheme which will generate that much income it will increase uh, the capital value and you'll get around that much uh, five years down the line so that these sort of expenses need to be thought of earlier it's all there in the mind definitely and uh, some of us are very sharp uh, they're very good at this uh, special financial goals we know this is coming up or this will come up so this is how i will finance it so this is nothing but just putting it on record and being sure that when the occasion comes. Now, for example, it can happen that you plan to get your uh, uh, child married after five years, but it could happen after three years. So do you have the money for it or will you have to break some existing investments? I really know. So this whole exercise helps in ensuring that we have a smooth financial journey, not only for us, but also for our families. At the same time, ensuring that we don't borrow, we don't uh, borrow from, uh, uh, we don't take loans, we don't borrow from our relatives or our friends, uh, we don't even borrow on our credit cards. So this 
sums up my uh, session uh, for the evening. And uh, good to see a, a fairly uh, attentive audience, though I can't see all your faces. Anup is there, uh, Leo is there, Anju is there, and I'm sure the others also are there. Muriel, Ajay, there Muriel. is a query yeah. about EMI okay. loans. Sumati, okay. I think, wants to know. Yeah, Sumati, uh, what is the query? You uh, can unmute uh, Sumati. Ajay, yeah. yeah. Um, Ajay ji, this uh, home loan which we've been having, like um, most of us have uh, home loan. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what about is that, that does that come under uh, debt, home loan, or which has been borrowed from bank, any nationalized bank or any financial? No, for the purposes of this budget uh, exercise, it's we're just talking okay. about the inflow and the outflow. So we're talking about the cash receipts and the cash payments. Cash means not literally cash, it's online, it's check payment. So yes, it would come yeah. under payments. You will, when you're making your budget, obviously yeah. you will, uh, you know, you'll have this uh, under your payments. It, it's part of your payments, right? Money is going right. out of your account. Right. So it has to come in the in the payments. Deb obviously. Debits. Okay. In the debits, yeah. yeah. Yeah, correct. Debits and credits. Good that you said that. So you've been an accountant, <laughs> but... Uh, MBA, MBA uh, grad. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm an MBA grad, Ajay ji. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. You can call Human me Ajay. Human resource. Wow, that's great. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any Anybody else? Ankita is there. Uh, so, what a mix of people. Anup, all well? It's good? You, you spoke? Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Good, good. Actually, I think everyone here has knows little on finance. So, this budget is an yeah. easy process if you do it. <laughs> As, yeah, right, right, as yeah. one person said, we don't do it. So it's a question yeah. of whether you do it or not. Yeah. Yeah, that was Ravinder Ji. So, yeah, uh, because yeah. then the tendency would be that, you know, things are going hunky dory, it's all fine. Yeah. And possibly uh, that Actually, would be the most, case. I, I do not know. Everyone does it so specifically, but I think we just keep, a, you know, that, okay, household expenses like yeah. for food yeah. and all so much and right. electricity, this, that, you know, so it goes. Right. A thousand, two thousand, up, down, and say, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely fine. So, Leo, as you rightly said, yeah, they different households do it in different ways. Right. And this is a practice and a tradition which is being carried forward. Right. Even our grandfathers, uh, grandparents used to do it. Our parents no, used no, to it do it. It is important to know that whether you're yeah. going to spend 30,000 or 50,000 a month, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah, it comes, at least you get an idea of what is your... No, no absolutely right. So you, you do it in different ways. As Rajiv has yeah. given a comment saying for him, it's more of a mental exercise. That's good enough. But at least it's there. You you that's cannot just remain true. oblivious to it. Okay. Tell him and to do Sudoku also. <laughs> and uh, <he's>, uh, <laughs> I want to say something, Mr. Rajiv. I never made a budget. By, uh, okay. But I always had an emergency fund that of six months salary, I always ah. kept, uh, okay. yes, that if, if I need at any time, it should be there. Ah. Okay, fine. That's great. So again, you know, there are certain good practices to, uh, to be followed. Uh, you know, as Leo was saying, it need not be done in that level of detail. The example which I gave is just a, uh, it's yeah. a dummy it's a, sort of a case. If somebody wants to do it in a scientific way, this is the way to do it. But obviously, uh, all of us do it in some form or the other. But uh, Nidhiji uh, said the right thing that she didn't do the budgeting, but at least she had this emergency fund. Six so months month salary always as an emergency fund. And till my okay. children were studying, it was hmm. till 2011. I never overspent. Okay. I never spent on things like jewelry or all those. Like oh. I'm also a celebrated person. I'm a doctor. No but fun. Okay. When they are well settled... <laughs> But now when they are yeah. well set, <laughs> you said nah, then no I fun spent on, on all these knickknacks. And now I think even I I think this is this always also is not required. Okay. Yeah, so, so you're right, enough. Nitichi. You know, uh, the budget will not remain static, so it'll evolve. It'll depend on the needs and the situation. Yes. As you rightly said, now your children are yes. earning. So they, they, yes. they can take care of themselves financially. So you have more funds for yourself. So yes. it, it changes, it varies, but Yes. You know, as Raji was That's saying, why really, once I asked you about the PPF, now I want to say for my grandson, my grandchildren. Very good, very, very good thought. So you're saving for your grandchildren and your parents for also. My grandchildren. For now, children. Yeah, I gift good, them good. Uh, for the PPF. Very PPF. good. That's why once I asked you about it and it okay. was very helpful for me. 
Ah, you're the one who asked. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Great, so great. This is, you no, know, I it's think a very God. noble thing which you are doing, Nidhi. Sorry, Anju. Thank you. Hey, I said this creating this kind of a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet for your. It actually helps, you know. Suppose a spouse is running the house, and suddenly the other spouse has to take over stuff on their head. Suddenly, it falls on the other spouse. So they have it all well recorded and well written. So you don't have to keep on fumbling and thinking, you know. So I think if you just write down somewhere or make a spreadsheet, like nowadays spreadsheet is uh, very important, it becomes very common. So I think it helps the other family members. Like suppose if you're suddenly out of order, like you're sick or you're ill and you're not able to focus on everything, somebody else can take over quickly and understand your uh, regular expenses and needs. So I think, I think that's a that's a, that's a very good idea. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's important, and also you know you are you're listing uh, your the details of your corpus. We had a separate session earlier. So what are your uh, you know different investments? Where are you invested? With full details, that needs to be put on record, so that any member of the family, or especially the husband and the spouse, uh, have access to it. Which branch? Uh, who are the nominees? Except when is the investment falling due? When is it maturing? So you need to ensure that you have, as I explained, have you renewed it on time or have you redeemed it and invested somewhere else? So it it saves a lot of uh, uh, you know bother later on. So it's it's yeah. good that all the family members, especially also, the adults, are on the same page. Yeah. Also slippages, you know. Also slippages. Like you've forgotten something, you may not mental, you may not, may not have made a mental note. But something suddenly something comes up and you don't know where your money suddenly disappeared. Mm. So if you have everything written down, it's like you have a good control over your spends and uh, interest. Suppose some kind of uh, money has not come in today. Suppose if I'm one of the uh, schemes, so you immediately make a note. Ki, look, this was expected, but it has not come in. Yeah. So the, writing it down and listing it down actually helps in all that. So I think it's good because if you yeah, and the best way to do it is on expense, Excel, I would say. Right. Yeah, if you slip out on an expense, then you may be in for a rude shock later on. Yeah. So I'll uh, I have the concluding uh, slides, uh, which uh, which I'll just share with you, uh, not on the presentation but on get set up. Outro. Yeah, it's somehow one minute. <laughs> there is some issue. Let's see. Start again. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. So uh, we conclude the takeaways, how to make a personal budget, uses, how to monitor the actual uh, income expenses and how to post correct. Uh, Get set up, as you all know, is a platform for older adults by the older adults. The mission is to create opportunities for older adults, help others learn tools, skills. And uh, definitely uh, it'll help if you all spread the word to those who would be interested. And more importantly, if you have any uh, new ideas, any uh, new topics which you would like us to take up, please feel free to share it. Uh, Siddharth at the rate getsetup.io, you can mail it to him for uh, any of your queries, including uh, somebody who's asking, uh, you know, getting the link for this uh, session today, please mail to Siddharth at getsetup.io. Uh, Ajay Chandiramani, uh, the next classes, day after tomorrow, 4 p.m., focus will be on investment options, uh, gold and silver, how good or how bad they are as investment options. And uh, the next one would be next week, uh, again, 4 p.m., 10th March. Uh, it's on uh, basically a top news, a topical news uh, discussion. Uh, you'll be getting the class notes at the end of the session. Uh, most of you all would have gone through it. You can uh, most welcome to give a feedback. The feedback is in uh, this format. So uh, we have to rate the session, rate the guide, uh, where we can improve done. So that's all which we have today. Thanks all for being there. Thank you. Thank the you. Okay.
maybe it's not yeah. a very exciting Thank or you, topic like uh, mutual uh, fund or uh, income tax filing, but still it was good to have all of you all. Okay. So, uh, right. right. Pleasure. Thanks, Ajay. Bye, Ajay. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks good, all. Good, Thank Thank you. Bye, Anu. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, Anu. Bye, Anu. Bye, Anu. Bye, bye. Bye, Leo.